Hey everybody, what's going on? Today, we are doing something incredible and amazing and game-changing. We're deleting the whole website. I know what you're thinking, that sounds a little bit crazy, but this goes way, way back for me. I've been doing motion graphics and graphic design for as long as I can remember, and this has been a kind of weird method that I've relied on to try to make the best product possible. Hasn't always worked, obviously. You can go back and look at some of my old YouTube videos for evidence of that. But generally speaking, I have found that doing the same thing twice with different knowledge sets both times will make quite a big difference. And that's that's not particularly difficult to do. Every time you build something once, you learn more about it than you knew before. So inherently, by doing something twice, the second time around, you're going to be better equipped to do it. That doesn't necessarily mean that the second draft is going to be the best, and oftentimes I'll go back and use the first draft of something in the final product anyways, but a lot of times I will still do something twice. So a couple of things that I want to be clear about. I'm not actually just deleting the whole website for no reason. I have a backup of it here. I think I made the point. The point isn't just to lose data for no reason. It's just to have a second go at something and uh, tr try and learn something. And also I wanted to mention that the version that has been seen in these videos so far isn't even close to the only version of my website that I've written. I've actually got a version over here that's pretty close to done, despite the uh, 404 error, but it's it, it works. Most of the pages are filled out. They haven't been uploaded to the, uh, the hosting platform yet, but for the most part, they're finished. Uh, it includes everything from a working dark mode to a fairly complete mobile experience um, with, you know, collapsing menus and that type of thing. There's a few weird little errors that I'm noticing now that I'm looking at it. This, uh, this table that's right up against the edge of the... Uh, phone screen would be an issue. Also, this isn't even close to centered. So a few issues and kinks to work out. And, and honestly, this version of my website is irrelevant. I just mean to say that there's a lot of versions of most of the stuff that I do. And I think that for the most part, that's a good thing. So this is where we were before. And hopefully by the end of this video, we're going to get back to a similar place. And it might not even look very different. It might not look different at all. But basically what the aim here is maintenance. If I show you the original code here, this is everything we've written so far. And it's already been clear that I've been making some mistakes. I set up headers and footers in a weird way. At one point, I was even using like non-breaking spaces to separate out elements in a footer. There was just, it was, it was a lot of like dumb mistakes there's a class for basically every element and it's set up in a weird way so that every time I create an element I'm having to reference a class whereas if I were to uh, let me show you here so if I uh, delete this class h1 section here and then if I were to just remove that dot in front of that these two items are still going to link up I'm still going to be using the properties that I set up the uh, sorry the attributes that I set up over here. So I mean, let me prove that real quick, I guess. Uh, refresh the page. So nothing has changed. The H1 still looks identical to the way that it did before, but it's cleaner. There's less less that we need to write uh, that's going to save us time. It's going to make things look nicer and it's going to make me happier. So if you're sitting at home watching this video um, and you just thought, what on earth am I watching? Just think of this as basically maintenance. I'm, I'm doing it in kind of a weird way by starting from scratch again, but that seemed like me to be the easiest way to maintenance the whole website. And we haven't done a lot of work yet, so it's not like I'm losing a ton of stuff. And since I'm relatively new to this to begin with, I'm more than happy to do it over again. Uh, so let's go ahead and just get started. We're gonna, of course, uh, create a website Again, uh, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to uh, to rewrite all of the stuff in the head. That seems completely unnecessary. We're going to inherit all of the favicons that we set up in the very last video. All of the meta stuff. You know, we've got the character set up here. I'm going to delete the title and I'll also delete the link to the CSS, wherever that is. There we go. 
Also, even just like the spacing is a little bit screwed up because I was using text editors and I didn't make sure that they were all using the same spacing and I just was hitting tab. So that was bugging me a little bit. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and close the body tag here. Uh, but basically all that we're really starting with is we've got some Google fonts uh, and we've got the code for font awesome to use for our social links. And then we've got favicons and of course uh, a few meta tags here. Uh, you know, the author, the description for this page, keywords for this page, and character set, UTF-8, oh, and then uh, robots, index, and follow. So for this page, uh, we'll go ahead and add another title, and we're going to call it uh, Styling Style Sheet. Uh, again, what we're working with at the beginning of the process is just setting up a blank container page that's going to basically function to create the styling for the entire website. Uh, and then we'll also do a link to our CSS file over here, uh, main.css. I'll do link href. Uh, over here, if we take a look at our project tree, um, pretty simple. We've got the main project folder, and then this is the stylesheet.html file that we're working in now. And then if we want to link to this main CSS file, it's uh, in a folder called CSS, name of the file CS, main.css. So we'll do CSS to reference that folder, slash main.css, and then we'll type in relationship and set it to style sheet that's going to be everything we need to know. So now we're ready to work with the body. I'm going to go ahead and minimize the head up here so we don't have to worry about it. And first thing I want to do is I'm going to, right over here, I'm going to create a section to edit some stuff on the body over in the CSS. So we're going to open up a class for the body. And I'll just do, actually, before I do this, I need to create an element so you can see what we're doing here. So I'm going to do div uh, and then uh, slash another div. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot to increase the, uh, the font size here. Let me get that up a little bit. So I'll do the div and I'll just put some uh, some generic text. Oh, I forgot. I've got a great new um, Alfred workflow that will just let me generate uh, lip some text really quickly. So that'll be cool. Well, that's not ideal. Okay. And then over here for the div, I'm just going to create a border so that we can see what's happening really quickly. Oh, I did that totally wrong. Div. And then uh, we'll say for all of that, we'll have a border. Uh, and I'll just do a solid one pixel red, something like that. All right. So now if we take a look at our website, assuming that it loads, hopefully it does styling. Well, something's gone wrong already. I don't have a closing HTML tag. That will create an issue. Okay, let's refresh again. Okay, so now we have uh, some text in here with a little red border, but what I want to point out is that up here in the corner, we have uh, some padding and margin and stuff. Uh, ba basically, uh, what, what I'm trying to illustrate is the margin and padding issue, and I think I've done this in a different video, but it's pretty easy to fix if you come up to the body and just say margin equals zero px whoops zero and then padding also equals um zero what you'll end up with is a website that just sticks to the edges of the browser and i found that to be a much easier way to work it's not too big of an issue a lot of times until you start to incorporate like full width elements a lot of times images and stuff like that are really an issue for me so that's what we want to set up first okay and now we can lose that div tag and then while we're over here in the css i want to organize it a little bit better and i'm going to do that by by adding comments. So the first comment I'll do is I'm just going to call this like global properties. And that's not the best name for this section, I guess, now that I think about it. Basically what I want is a section of the CSS where everything inside is going to affect kind of the whole website. I'm going to create different sections for headers and footers and any like big elements that take up a lot on our page. Um, but for right now, I want these to be attributes that basically I set up once and reference back to, but that are never really going to change. I can come back and make changes to them, but it's going to be uh, things that I do, the body, uh, headers, paragraphs, that type of thing. And then, you know, I'll have different sections for uh, like uh, oh, navigation. Navigation is a good one. Navigation and footers will be sections that we set up. Uh, and in case you're curious, you're not familiar with this, um, these are just CSS comments, uh, which you do by slash and and then the asterisk and asterisk and slash to close them out. And these are just text that you can insert into CSS and it will not affect anything whatsoever um, as far as CSS is concerned. This is basically just not there. Um, so you can write whatever you want in here and it won't affect your style sheet. So then we'll go ahead and set up some classes for our uh, elements that we were just talking about. Um, 
headers are obviously a big one. Um, so we'll go ahead and I guess over here in the HTML, we'll go ahead and create our headers. So we'll call this a header and we can close out of that. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six of those. I think I made one too many, definitely did. So then we can H2, H3, H4, okay. And then I'll also go ahead and do uh, like some paragraph. We'll get some more of that uh, lip some text. Okay, close out of that. And then I guess inside of here, we can go ahead and do our links and we'll do, uh, let's see, we'll do inside of our uh, strong tag for bold text, we'll do bold text and then we can close out of that, put another break at the end. Then we can do our italicized text with the emphasis tag. Oh, and in case you also don't know this, I'm not, I don't remember if I mentioned it, but the reason that we're using strong and emphasis rather than I and bold is basically because of accessibility. Um, the strong and the emphasis tag work better with um, screen readers for whatever reason is, is my understanding at least. So, Little things that we can do to help out with like accessibility is cool. Uh, it turns out that there's a lot of uh, blind and otherwise disabled people using the internet. Uh, surprise, surprise. So if we can do a couple of little things at the beginning to help out with that, that is going to help out in the long run. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, oh yeah, the link text. It's supposed to be an A tag. I knew I was doing something wrong. I got confused. It's because I was looking at the head, and I know I said we were going to close that. I should have had it closed the whole time. A href. Okay. And then this is going to be a uh, hyperlink, and we want to also set up the styling for that, which we've mentioned in other videos why that is important to do at the start. Okay. So now we can go ahead and style these. Should be pretty easy. Uh, we've got font. Uh, family. And of course, we've gone over Google Fonts in another video, but these are the ones that I have set up. Uh, I've got Monosat, Lado, Amiri, and uh, source, co source Code Pro. And once you have these uh, style sheets added, you can just reference them without having to worry about anything, really. So let me go ahead and add Montserrat, and that is uh, Sans Serif. Montserrat or uh, Sans Serif. And we're going to set the font weight to 400, and we'll do line to the center and what else here font size would be like 4.5 em and again the reason to use this value the em value rather than like pixels is the same thing we've said before with screen readers one unit here of these em values is basically equal to either 14 or 16 pixels for normal text um so if you just leave it at default that's what it'll use but 4.5 is basically going to be four and a half times larger than the default text size uh and then what else we'll do a uh, margin left left uh we'll do 10 percent and then the margin right is also going to be 10 percent okay and then we'll set the color to um Let's see, I wanna do, I guess like a dark gray, but not totally day gray. So we'll do like uh, maybe 333. Actually, I'm gonna to wanna to take a look at that and see what it looks like. So let's refresh here. I got an issue with the margin there. Forgot to add the percent sign, but take a look. Header, yeah, that's nice. It's not totally black, it's kind of a dark gray. We might even go up a little bit higher, maybe like 555. That's probably gonna to be too bright. Yeah, maybe we can do like, ooh, I don't know, like 3A, 3A, 3A. Check that out. Yeah, very nice. Um, so now to set up the rest of our headers, what I've done is just made copies uh, in the past and then changed the elements that we need to. For the most part, I want the headers to be fairly in sync. Um, so for H2, for example, we'll just shrink the font size a little bit. I still want it to be like a nice bold header, but I don't need it to be quite as large. So we'll do maybe 3.5 EM. Take a look at that. Again, nice header that really sets that, you know, you'll notice on the page isn't as humongous. Uh, H3 is just going to be uh, same idea again, but just much, much smaller. So maybe just double the normal size, 2 EM. Uh, you know, maybe slightly larger than that. Maybe like 2.2 or something. I like that. Okay. And then let's see. Should have been copying these one at a time, but too late to fix that now. I'll do H4 should be probably the same. Oh yeah, but then we'll uh, set it to the left. And I don't have much of a, a use for H5 or H6, so I'll just make them the same thing. But honestly, actually, if I'm not gonna use them, I don't even see the need to write out a class for them. And maybe this is another mistake that I'm making that'll come back once I understand why it's a mistake and like laugh at myself. But 
what, huh? If I'm not gonna, if I'm only really gonna be using the four, what's the point in writing them all out? It's just a waste of space. So yeah, there we have four headers that are pretty functional and that I'm happy with, so. Cool. Uh, next up is our paragraph. I put the wrong parentheses there. It's the uh, the squiggly ones. So we'll set this up real quick. Uh, again, we're gonna be using uh, one of those Google fonts. So it's font family. Uh, this one is Lado. Yeah, it's the one that I was using. I had to think about it for a second. And then if not that, sans serif font. Wait, uh, we'll also set that to 400. Uh, text align to the left, font size. 1EM, and I'm putting this here because I don't remember if this is one of the fonts that I wanted slightly larger or not. But then I'll also just do margin left, like 15%, and margin right. Also, I need a semicolon there. And then margin right, 15%. And then we'll, s and then we can use that color that we found earlier. What was it? It was um, uh, five five five. Is that it? I think that was the one that I liked earlier, but not for this. Oh yeah. Okay. See, that's it. And I do want this text bigger. I thought I would. So we'll do like one point two or so, maybe slightly bigger than default. Yeah, I think that's a good size for it. Okay. Uh, very nice. Um, the last section of our global attributes is going to be our link that we set up. So that should be pretty easy to do. We're going to set up a class uh, for that. So it's gonna be A. So we'll reference the A class, uh, say it's anything that's a link, you know, uh, and then let's see here. I'm going to, it's gonna be using the the bot, the, sorry, the, uh, the paragraph by default. Um, so all we really need to do is set up a few things for like color and that type of thing. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna change the color to be slightly darker. Uh, if we did 555 five, five for the paragraph, maybe we could do 333. Three, three. Um, basically the same color as the header, I think, would be what we're looking at. Let's, let's take a look here. And actually what I should do with the link is drop it in with our text to see if I can notice it kind of quickly and easily. Well, I can because it's underlined, obviously, but let's um, use that out. Uh, let's turn the uh, text decoration text decoration off so we don't get that underline. I'll say none, and then take a look. Okay, yeah, so it still stands out a bit, but it's not like super in your face, which I like. We we could maybe go a little bit darker though. Maybe two two two. Ooh, that's slightly lighter. Uh, two eight two eight. That did not make much of a difference. <laughs> uh, we'll do um that maybe. Okay, yeah, I like that. That that I think looks nice. Uh, and then also we're gonna do the background color thing. I don't remember what browser it is, but there's some browser that uses, that like sets a background color on links by default. Um, if so, I think it's one of the like older outdated ones, but I wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. It might not even be a thing anymore. And then we're gonna make some copies of this for the different states of our links. So for example, like on hover, we're going to want to change it to a different color. So I'm gonna do uh, DC3232, uh, the hexadecimal value for kind of my red color that I use everywhere. So if we hover over, we get a nice red. Uh, I'm going to also I'm gonna go ahead and turn the underline back on. I'm not usually a fan of that. Turned it on in the wrong place. I wanna turn it on for the uh, the hover. Um, I'm not usually a fan of like the underline thing, but I don't mind if it's there just for the hover. Um, yeah, I might end up changing my mind about that, but I'll let it sit for now. And then we need, there's basically two other states. We have uh, when the link is active and when the link is been visited. And for both of those, I'm going to just have no change take place. So that's as easy as, woo. So that is as easy as copying over all of the attributes from that original class. And then the other thing that I'll do up here at the top under the link, we're going to add transition. 0.3 seconds is the time that usually works for me. And that's just going to have a little bit of a transition there so that the the hovering isn't so, the, the transformation between the classes isn't such a like snappy kind of Thanos thing. It's just very, it's nicer if it's a bit more relaxed, I think. 
So that's what we're aiming for. All right, so that's about it for the most part. I wanted to make sure that I was setting things up in a cleaner way. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and redo the header and stuff off screen. Uh, basically just the header and the footer, I think is the only other thing that we've done so far. And that's basically just because we've already done it. There'll be a few little things that are different, but I don't think it's anything that's anyone's gonna like gain any information from. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. But thank you everyone for checking out this video. I hope it wasn't too like weird or confusing or somewhat pointless seeming. To me it made a lot of sense to kind of reset everything and go from there but I can see why other people wouldn't necessarily um, feel that way. So thank you everyone for checking out the video. I will see you in the next one.